So we're wrapping up the four agreements, and the four agreements is by Don Miguel Ruiz, and it is for sale in the Life Abundant Bookstore. I highly recommend that you have a copy of it, and then you read it. I don't know about you guys, sometimes I buy a book because somebody says, oh, it's really a good book to have, and then I put it on my bookshelf like by osmosis. I'm going to gather in all the brilliance. This is, it's an easy book. I swear, it is an easy book, it's not very thick, and it's brilliant if you can, when we, leave our li li when we live our life with the four agreements as the foundation of who we are, which we teach here only, we use different words. I want to start off by sharing um, some wisdom by Alden Nolan. The day the child realizes that all adults are imperfect, he becomes an adolescent. The day he forgives them, he becomes an adult. The day he forgives himself, he becomes wise. And so what we tend to do with always do your best is we set ourselves up for high expectations. Like I really thought I was going to move into my new house yesterday, be unpacked, pictures were going to be on the wall, and whoo! It's going to be a while. And realizing and owning that it's going to be a while, and I can still do my best within that. The unreal, the unreal expectation is then we set ourselves up and we start to beat ourselves up about, oh, see, there you go again. We have all of that self-judgment. And it's that self-judgment that keeps us stuck in the reality of who we are. So what if we gave that up? What if we realized that even right now, today, we have an opportunity to always do our best? And today, our best may look really different than our best looked yesterday. Because today, we may be tired. Today, we may be full of energy, and yesterday, we didn't feel so good. And if in all of those different emotional places of being, you can still do your best. Then you can look yourself in the mirror and say, yep, I'm good. There's no reason I have to beat myself up. I have a really good friend that uh, on his third divorce, he was really upset. He was like, People shouldn't be getting, you know, why, why am I going through my third divorce? What is wrong with me? And so he called his dad, and this is what I thought was brilliant when he shared this with me. And his dad said to him, son, did you do your best? Can you look yourself in the mirror and say, I absolutely gave everything I could to this relationship to make it work? And it's complete. And he said, absolutely. And he said, then you have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of. That's about doing your best. And what Don Miguel Ruiz says, it's the action step to the other three agreements. So as we've talked about, something will happen. We'll be in conversation with somebody. They will say something. And it will be like, there's that button. And we take it personal. And what we forget to do is then say anything to the person. Remember, we talked about making assumptions. So then we make all these assumptions. And then because we're human, we want to build our camp. We want to make sure everybody knows what happened, what they said to us, and why they're wrong and you're right. Has anybody been there? Uh, oh, good. Okay. I think we all do it. And so what he's saying is when we do that, then we're not being impeccable with our word, and we're shooting poison arrows into the universe. And so then we really aren't doing our best. And so to remember that it's always a practice. 
Like I had, I received an email from somebody and, and the, they made a comment and it was not about me. And my comment back was, what, what I will own for myself is I need to show up better. And that creates the space for the other people to show up better. Because if we're all energy and we're all reflections, then it's when something is askew, if you will, in your life, who can change that? You can. You can change how you show up. You can be different. And then energetically, when you're different, things around you will shift. And when it shifts, sometimes that's kind of scary. I remember losing a best friend. We'd grown up together. And I told her that I had quit drinking, quit using drugs, quit smoking, and I'd found this fabulous church. I think that might have been the deal breaker. (laughs) And she looked at me and she said, well, then we can't be friends any longer. And it really hurt me. And yet she was right. Because my life was not in dance step with her life anymore. And so what you have to realize is when you shift, when you start to do things to make a better you in the world, people may fall away. And what we tend to do when that happens is we grab onto them and like, don't go. And when we do that, we're holding ourselves back. We're saying we really want to change And then we're holding on to something that keeps us exactly like we were before. And so how do we grow into that place of letting go? And part of that is just realizing and owning that in each moment, everything really is all about you. I know that sounds a little, I mean, the great word now out, out everywhere is narcissistic. It sounds very narcissistic. What do you mean it's all about me? I didn't even know what that word meant, I swear, two years ago, and now everybody's narcissistic. And yet in this philosophy, what we teach is the only person we can change on the planet is us. And so if we're going to change us, then it is about me. I can only change me. And when I change me, then that will vibrate out. And people around me may change. They may not. They may shift out of my life. And because I know the universe hates a vacuum, more people shift in. It is an amazing dance that we do. How many of you have taken a class from Mary Mann and Morrissey? Prosperity Plus. Do you remember the story when she talked about walking on the beach on the Oregon coast? Really, really upset with God that she had lost everything. She had worked her entire life to create this community in Oregon and like that, it was taken away from her. And she took responsibility for what she needed to take responsibility for. But she spent months walking up and down that beach, yelling at God. Until she was done. And she went, okay. Now, what do I need to do to make this okay in my life? And now she stands and looks back and thinks, wow. What if I'd hung on so tight, so tight to what was, I couldn't create this fabulous life I have now? And so that's what we teach here, is to show up as God in form, because that's who you are. That's who you are. And so to realize if that's who you are, then you need to put down the battering ram. Anybody have one of those in their back pocket? Yeah. I'm not good enough. You know, I think they used to be whips in the old days. 
we need to start loving ourselves so outrageously that we give everybody around us the opportunity to truly do what this vision says we are, to truly love unconditionally. And you have to start with yourself. I can love you to death, and if I don't love myself, you're going to get that. Because energetically, whether you realize it or not, there's something in you that goes, there's something a little off about what she's saying and how she's behaving. Have you ever seen that happen? You meet somebody, they've got a big smile on their face, life is good, and you're thinking, I, I don't think so. You know, what, what is up? And so it really is to tap into that, what is up? And to be honest with yourself and to be honest with other people. You know, if you're not having a good day, find a friend and say, I'm not having a good day. You know, I, was, it, I have a prayer partner and we do a prayer and part of the visual that I that came to me as we were praying because she wanted joy and excitement was and I'm going to say little girls because that's what I was twirling around in the backyard with your arms out until you fell down and just laughing hysterically because you felt so dizzy and the world was spinning around you and yet as adults we don't do that anymore because, I don't know, our, what if the grass is wet? What if there's a bug in there? You know, what if, I, what if I muss my hair when I fall down? All kinds of reasons that we forget what it was like to be a child. Because when we were kids was when we were closest to God. Because we hadn't been taught that we were separate. And so it, if you're going to do your best, it's really those moments when you get, oh my goodness, I'm God in form. I am God in form. How do I show up? And so to get back to that email, what I realized is that there are times that I make comments that just aren't appropriate. It's not, I mean... Somebody might say, oh, that wasn't appropriate just because of the language I use. Um, but what I mean by not appropriate is I might have, Courtney, I'm going to use you because you know this isn't true. I might have an issue with Courtney. And rather than going to Courtney and saying, you know, Courtney, buck up, girlfriend. I go to Carol and I said, God, you know, this is what I wish Courtney would do or behave or whatever because I'm building that. And so what I get is, I need to clean my own house. And I don't do it often. I'm much better. You know, I grew up, boy, we, we spit poison like it was water. And so it's been a practice with me with this philosophy is if I'm going to spit poison, what's going to come back to me? Of course. What else can? Am I going to be perfect at it? Someday I hope because that's going to be my number one thing now is when somebody says something about another person, I'm not going to agree or disagree. I'm just going to stand there. Because when I disagree or agree, what happens is I'm feeding the beast. And then I'm not always doing my best. And so my commitment to this community, and I hope I get a commitment back from all of you, because we can't build community if we're going to snark at each other. We just can't. And, w and no, we're not all perfect. We've all got little warts everywhere. And yet if we are going to be a community that's built on unconditional love, it has to start here, in this room. And so that's the commitment that I make to all of you, and I hope you make it back, that we're just going to stop that. And not only stop it here, stop it everywhere. Stop it everywhere because it's damaging to the heart. And the heart that it damages the most 
is yours. And if everything comes back tenfold, ouch. And so it's living truthfully in the four agreements. Can you be impeccable with your word? If Courtney upsets me, can I go to Courtney and say, Courtney? And Courtney will tell you she and I had a conversation like that where I thought that I had said something and I needed to sit down with her because I knew she was upset and I thought I had caused her upset. And so I've got a little plaque in my office is, you know, get a cup of coffee, pull your, put on your big girl panties. I had that conversation. Can you do that with somebody and say, I may, I may be the cause of your anger and I'm so sorry. How can I fix that? Can you be the person that takes nothing personal? Remember I said, that is my hardest agreement, is not taking anything personal. It really, really is. So I must have really been teased when I was young or something. And, it, and somebody said, the agreement that you forget is the one you need to work on the most. And I used to forget that one all the time. And then if something happens and I take it personally, can I go to that person and talk to them about it? Those are tough conversations. Because sometimes you feel like you're having the same conversation with the same person over and over again and you start to feel a little bit like a bully. And yet if you don't have that conversation, you're making up stories and you're assuming things. And so sit down and have the conversation because that's the only way we get to do our best. And some days it's going to be easy peasy. And other days, we may fall down. And what I know is if you fall down, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start again. Because if you stay down, then you're kind of lost. You know, I used to, um, I, there used to be a story about a hole in the street. Have you guys heard that one? And the guy... I know Bernie has because I'm sure I heard it in ministerial school. There's a hole in the street and the person goes, walks down the street, falls in the hole. Kind of comfortable in the hole. So it gets kind of cozy. And then he drags himself out of the hole. And then he walks down the street another day and he sees the hole and he looks down and thinks, well, it was kind of comfortable in that hole. And he steps in. And then he thinks, it's kind of cold and damp down here. And he drags himself out and starts again. The next day, he looks down the street and he thinks, sees the hole and he goes, huh, I think I'm going to go down a different street. That's how we grow. That's how we grow. Because let me tell you, there were times that I would climb into that hole. I would take a blanket and a TV, mirrors on the wall. It was comfy comfy and now I choose to walk down different streets that's the blessing that these four agreements give us it's a way of life it's a way of being and that's brilliant in the teaching because it's easy so let's pray and so as Carol started her and thank you Carol I was like I don't know the Bible I'm not going to know what she's reading and I knew that song so breathing in that glory that oneness that connection to God and breathing out and letting go of things that no longer serve your body temple knowing that the minute it hits the air it's dissipated it is gone because energetically the divine has just gone pfft, none of that and then take another deep breath in and feel the energy around you as you do that. Feel the love that is being generated in this room. Breathe that in and now breathe out the joy that is the truth of who you are and share that 
with the universe. And then one deep breath in, one more. Feeling the vibration of the room. Feeling the delight in your cells. And as you breathe out, just ah. And so what I know right here and right now, there is one life. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is my life. That life is your life right here, right now. And it is perfect. It is perfect because it is created by us and we are God in form. And so I know that if God is all there is, if God is that vibration that is bigger than all of us, if it is in and through and as each of us, then it always has been, always will be, and is right here and right now. And so I invite you to tap into that, to know that, to be that. To remember the four agreements as you move through your day. To remember what we believe and how closely those are related. Each one of us an opportunity to be great. To live the fullest life we can. To stop being tethered to negativity. To let go of things that no longer serve us. People, places, or things. And to delight in the friendships that fill us up. To delight in the connections of those that say yes with us. To know that each and every single one of us is here on this planet walking this earth for a reason. And that reason, as Carol said in, her, in the psalm, all glory be to the divine because it lives within you. And so when you say that, it's all glory to you. You are a manifestation of it in form. And so we remember that. We are that. We say thank you, God, because of that. And in that thank you, we giggle with delight. We picture in our mind's eye, twirling around in the backyard with our arms extended and sit till we are so dizzy, we fall on the ground in laughter and say, whoa, life is good because I'm here and I'm part of it. So turning these words over into the law, knowing that as it is spoken, it is already so. It is truth because it is divine. I just let it go. I let it be. And together we say, and so it is.